I'm not here to hate on the OP1 field. I think it's a cool little niche device. I wish I had two grand to spend on it without feeling guilty, but that's not the situation we're in. So let's take our hypothetical $2,000 that we were going to irresponsibly spend on this new and fancy toy and see how many different synth setup ideas we can come up with instead. For all these setups, I'm gonna assume you already have an interface or mixer, speakers, the basic stuff you need to get sound out of your instruments. The first setup we're gonna talk about is my current setup with the exclusion of the Yamaha montage. The 37 puts us a little bit above our budget, so if you're really trying to keep it under 2000, the original key step will do just as good. The micro key air works great with the MPC through Bluetooth, so that's another good option. This is a super powerful setup for looping, sampling, sequencing, and composing. How I'd plug these up is I would run the MPC audio out into the 404 audio in and send a USB cable from the MPC to the 404 USB-C. This will allow me to hear the MPC through the SP so I can add effects, and the USB will let me sequence my 404 drums on the MPC. The Keystep 37 would take up one of the other USB slots and make it easier for us to play melodies and come up with ideas on the keyboard. Using the pad perform on the MPC Live is also a lot of fun because you can play with the ARPs and mess with the scales, and if you don't want a workflow based around a keyboard, that's another great alternative, you don't have to get a Keystep. Our next setup is going to be a classic setup with a sequencer, some synthesizers, and a drum machine. The brains of the whole operation is gonna be the Keystep Pro, which is one of my favorite hardware sequencers. Our drums could either come from the Arturia Drum Brute Impact if you're looking for analog sounds, or a TR6S if you're looking for something more sample based. The Keystep Pro lets us sequence four synths or three synths in a drum part. For my first synth, I'm gonna go with one of the Roland Boutiques, I'm thinking the JD08. Then we're gonna add a Volca FM for those classic sounds and beautiful gorgeous plucks. And for my last synth, since we still have some bread left, let's go ahead and add the Moog Mini Tower for some fat bass. Now let's talk about electron setups, because there's a few different ways we could go about this. We could do a Digitac Digitone combo and add one of the Roland Boutiques or a Micro Freak to sequence. We could go the analog rhythm route with a few Volcas since the rhythm can sequence external gear as well. An Octa track with a Roland T8 and G6 for drums and a synth, maybe add a guitar pedal, or if you want to be even more frugal, you could look into the Mark 1s of these devices and get the whole trilogy for like less than $2,000. The last setup you might want to consider before dropping two grand on an OP1 field is a small modular system. The most expensive part here can be getting a case, but that doesn't always have to be the case. For this example, I'm going to go with the budget-friendly Nifty case. This is the 84 HP powered case. Now the only thing left to do is add our modules. So let's head over to Modular Grid and plan out our 84 HP modular. For this setup, I'm starting with one of my favorite sequencers, the Variegate 4 Plus. I have a few videos on this module if you want to check it out, tutorials, using two at once, like I love this modular sequencer. Then we have a Mutable Instruments Rings and a Monsoon, which is a Clouds clone. We have an Intelligio Plonk, which is a lovely physical modeling synthesizer, a Make Noise Math so you can get that whole modular experience, an Optimix V2 that doubles as our mixer, and a Milky Way, which is the Endorphins multi-effects unit. This setup went 50 bucks over our budget, but when it comes to modular, I highly recommend buying used. People love selling and trading modules, so just get into the habit of buying used and you'll save a lot of money in the long run. This is a super powerful and fun ambient setup, but this is just one way of doing it. There's so many ways that you could go about building your modular system, just like there's so many ways that you could go about building a synthesizer setup. And like a modular system, it doesn't have to be permanent. Didn't like a synth you bought? Switch it out. But I do recommend trying to commit to a setup for a while and not to add too many things at once, or get in the habit of buying and selling gear without giving yourself enough time to learn it properly. It's all part of the learning process, just sharing what has worked for me and what hasn't. You'll eventually figure out what works for you, but have it be a gradual thing. It's easier on your family that way. And you're welcome. This video was brought to you by DistroKid. Being part of DistroKid means being part of a bigger music making community and getting access to tools like Slaps, which is DistroKid's music social network that is optimized for high engagement. On Slaps.com, you can post your music and discover new artists. You can follow, comment, and save the tracks that you like. And best of all, it's easy to reach out to artists when you're looking for a collab. If you're thinking of signing up, use the code below and save 7%.